Ooh, an email. Let's see. Dear motor friend, we are very sorry to disturb you. I am an US Amazon seller. My name is PXN Game. Our steering wheel sells very well on Amazon, ranked in the forefront of all steering wheel categories. If you are interested in this product, please directly reply to us. What do we have here? $180, and it comes with three pedals and a shifter, compatible with Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. It even works with games like Truck Life and Dirty 2.0. Sure. Sure. Why not? Until the sea. And... All right, first impressions out of the box. There's a lot of plastic going on here, which is pretty much exactly what I expected, to be honest. It's fine. Bunch of buttons on the face, that's always nice. Uh, you know, paddles make a nice click. They're also plastic. You got, you got a couple clamps here on the bottom that are pretty sturdy. It also has uh, optional suction cup mounts you can put on here which honestly I would never use unless I had like a glass tabletop or something. I don't really see that being very useful. And the wheel mount, wheel mount seems sturdy. It doesn't seem like it's gonna come loose or anything. Nice springiness to the, to the bungee cord in there, you know. Not, not a lot of resistance in there, but it does return to center pretty quickly, so that's nice. The housing on here looks a lot like the Logitech housing. I think that's kind of, uh, you know, where they stole their homework on this one. The angle here is kind of odd. If you're mounting it directly to your desk, then it's gonna be like up in your face, which I don't like too much. If you have an adjustable stand, it's gonna be much more comfortable for you. Pedals, similarly, lots of plastic, which I mean, most pedal housings are plastic too, so it's fine. There's a little bit of metal on the foot pads. This is about the only metal you'll find on this product. They don't offer a lot of feel, and also the, the spacing on them is not the best for things like heel towing. So you'll have to keep that in mind. On the bottom here, you got a little bit of grip going on. It's not gonna be as grippy as the Logitech, but it seems to do the job. Also, this flips out. So if you're putting it directly on the floor, you'll have a little bit more surface area to work with. So that's a nice touch. Uh, there's not really any like bolting option under here. So whether you're putting it on the floor, or you're putting it on a stand, you're, you're just plopping it down. Like not much else you can do with this unless you try and modify some things. Now the shifter here from appearance, from outer feel, from the feel of the mechanics of it, it's pretty much identical to the Logitech shifter. So once again, you know, they're copying somebody's homework. Uh, instead of like the faux leather, uh, boot on the Logitech shifter. This one has a rubber one, which I don't really, I don't really care either way. It seems to do the job, job just fine. The, the knob is completely plastic. The Logitech one also has some faux leather on there, but it's fine. Your hand's not really going to slip off of it or anything. You got a couple toggle switches up here, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then the clamp mount on this is pretty much also the same as Logitech shifter, and it's not going to slip around on you. So that's fine. Once again, like the Logitech, you get six gears and a reverse. And reverse is actually six where you gotta push it down. I'm feeling halfway to Robocop with all this equipment strapped to me, but I'm gonna try to relax and then we can get into it. Now this is pretty much gonna follow the same rules of my last wheel review with the Logitech and the Thrustmaster wheels. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But basically 10 laps, Miata, Road Atlanta, in Forza Motorsport 7, 
and then I'll give an impression score and I'll give a time score for you know how fast I can actually complete the thing. So let's hop right into it. Now, first of all, this is not a force feedback wheel whatsoever. It's the old fashioned, you know, bungee cord resistance, which, you know, what are you really gonna expect for so cheap? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And, uh, you know, that leaves it feeling very, very numb compared to an actual force feedback wheel. But nothing, nothing that can really be done about that. Um, it does have a vibration motor, you know, rumble, which gives you a little bit more feel. There is an issue with that, however. Um, I could not get the rumble to be compatible. I tried a bunch of different games on the Xbox. It just, it just doesn't work for me. Now, I assume if you put this on PC, you're going to have much better compatibility. Um, considering that this is just kind of a hack job. Oh no, oh no. See, that's what happens when you don't have force feedback. But yeah, this, this thing is, is more geared toward PC, I would say, even though it does have a lot of compatibility to it. It's kind of, uh, kind of jank in the way it's compatible. Now, it achieves that compatibility in kind of a weird way with the Xbox connection on this. The way it actually connects is you have to plug one end into the USB on the, on the system, which is normal. And then you have another USB cable that you have to plug into your standard gamepad. And that's the thing that makes it compatible. It's doing some kind of uh, I don't know, in between translation with the actual input signals, um, which seems crazy, but you know, shifter works, the pedals work, so it works. Oh, oh no, <laughs> did it again. As far as the quality of the wheel goes, it's all plastic, which is to be expected. I mean, honestly, it doesn't feel any worse quality than the, uh, the T-150 did, so it's, it's all right. Very little metal anywhere on here. The paddles are not metal, they're also plastic, uh, but they give an okay click, you know. Pedals, I would say, are the weakest, the weakest link here. They do have metal foot pads, which is all right, with some, some uh, rubberized plastic on them. The actual feel of the pedals is like non-existent, like literally gas brake clutch, identical resistance on all of them. You know, it doesn't feel realistic whatsoever. Uh, you know, the difference between like 0% and 100% on this is very slim. You're just, you're just mashing. It is not giving you a simulator experience. But once again, for the price, what else are you going to get? You know, T-150 pedals were worse than this, I, I think. You know, those things would fall over. These things at least stay in place. And the shifter I quite enjoy. It feels exactly like the Logitech shifter because I assume it's a bootleg of the Logitech shifter. <laughs> it has the exact same clickiness. Uh, it has the same feeling. Oh, <laughs> spinning all the time. It has the same feeling the same cheap feeling of the Logitech shifter, but you know, it is cheap. Logitech shifter costs $60. This, this is free in the package, you know, you know, some of that price goes to shifter, but whatever. Uh, compared to the Logitech though, it actually has two extra features. It has two toggle switches up here. One is for parking brake and the other is for to switch between low and high. So technically you have up to 12 forward gears with this thing. And both of those features are pretty much for trucking simulator. And I think a lot of uh, choices on this system were made specifically for trucking simulator or Euro truck, American truck simulator, any of those. The other thing too is that you can't really tell because I've, I've tilted it on my stand here, but the actual mounting angle on this wheel is like 15 degrees upwards which is like a truck. It's not like a race car. So I think, I think they've pretty much made this for trucking simulator, even though it's 
looks like a race car wheel. It's got the little line for center. It's kind of a weird hybrid. But you know, if you're if you're into trucking simulator, this could be good for you because it's not like you need like simulation force feedback for that or anything. It might be a solid option. What else we got here? We got a large variety of buttons on the face and they're programmable and they're reprogrammable. So that's gonna be nice for PC users especially. Um, it has an audio jack on it, which most wheels I've seen do not. So you can actually plug your headphones into the wheel. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work on the Xbox or maybe my product is defective, but I plugged in my headphones to record this and I got no audio coming through them. So I'm actually driving deaf right now. So, you know, if I miss any shifts, that's why. The other thing is when you plug it into the gamepad to get it working, you cannot plug it into a third party one. It has to be the factory Xbox gamepad. Um, and I, I initially tried it with a Razer gamepad that I have, but the shifter would not work. And I thought the whole thing was broken, but as soon as I plugged it into the correct controller, it worked just fine. It's a li weird little quirk. Overall, you know, I would say build quality here. It's nothing to write home about, but you don't have to, but you don't got to pay that much either. You know, it's about the same as like the T-150 and it's cheaper than a T-150 and you get the pedals and the shifter with it. As you probably noticed here in Motorsport 7, I spun a lot because you just don't have the feel of force feedback. This is probably not what you want for simulators, you know, to be blunt. But if you just throw on an arcade game, you know, arcade racing game, it's not too bad. And I'll demonstrate that right now. All right, here we are in Daytona USA, classic. Uh, difficulty normal, that's all fine. So uh, let's do it again, because I'm an idiot. Manual transmission. This kind of game is perfect for this kind of controller because this game is, you know, fairly old and it wasn't really made with force feedback in mind anyway. Uh, so, you know, you, this is like stress-free driving right here. Whoop. The paddle shifters work with this game. The uh, H-Pattern, unfortunately, doesn't really have compatibility with this game. Not much you can do about that. This is kind of the ideal experience, I would say, you're going to get with this controller. Because the, uh, the numbness you're experiencing in, like, Forza Motorsport, that just adds so much more stress. I spin a million times more, even in a low-powered car like the Miata. With, without that force feedback to actually give you information on what your car is doing. But this game, it's so simple. As far as the experience connecting this thing to the Xbox, there are a few compatibility issues. Rumble's not working, that's definitely a drawback. Uh, audio, headphone audio, not working. I was, I was ready to appreciate the headphone jack on it. Didn't work at all. That's a disappointment. Overall quality, it's not the best, but it's about on par with the cheap Thrustmaster, so it's all right. I think there's a case to be made for this. You just have to know what to expect here. You're not expecting the best experience. You're expecting the next best experience, you know, compared to an actual force feedback wheel. 
but you know it depends on what you want this thing for for simulators for really fast paced racing i would not recommend this for a trucking simulator maybe something like spin tires uh, this thing will also apparently work with Nintendo Switch, so you might be able to run Mario Kart on it. I can't really test that personally, but I mean the official Nintendo wheel already is, is a bungee cord wheel, so this is probably going to give you equal performance to that. So real quick, I'm going to... Real quick, I'm going to give final judgments on this thing and I'm gonna kind of slot it into the list that I previously established with my Logitech and Thrustmaster wheels. Uh, as far as build quality goes, I'd say this is about the same as the T150 slash TMX. I'm gonna give it like a seven. It's not great, it's not perfect, it's serviceable. I'm fine with it ultimately, but it doesn't feel quite like a premium product. It's, it's you know, it's about what you would expect for the price. When it comes to the actual Road Atlanta time, 10 laps in the Miata, it is significantly slower than all the other options that I've judged so far. And that's not great. Uh, total time for 10 laps was 19 minutes, 26 seconds, 0.722. And my fastest lap was 1 minute, 53.189. So that is several seconds behind all these other options. And that is pretty much 100% to do with the lack of force feedback, as well as kind of the awkward spacing on the pedals. So once again, I would not recommend this for serious racing applications, but if you're doing, you know, a much slower paced game, or you're doing a game which doesn't really require force feedback, it can be a solid option. So I would say I recommend this wheel, but with like five or six tiny asterisks next to that recommendation, you, you, should, know, you should know what you want to use it for and you should know what you're going to get because there's going to be plenty of drawbacks compared to a more expensive wheel. But if you want to get started cheaply, it can be a good option. If you want to play something like Mario Kart, if you want to play something that's much less demanding, this can do you fine. Uh, I haven't given, you know, too many bungee cord wheels a test, but if you're gonna get a bungee cord wheel, I feel like this is kind of the top of, of, of that list because no other bungee cord wheel I've seen actually comes with an H-pattern shifter and a clutch. So that's nice to have. <laughs>